So, we are going to start a new topic today, we are going to look at boiling. So, the so far all the processes heat transport processes we looked at, we assume that the heat transfer is occurring from let us say solid to a single phase or from a single phase fluid to a solid. So, what we are going to see is in boiling what happens is that there is a phase change which is involved. So, there is a phase change which is involved in boiling process and in fact uh, the same thing is involved in condensation which we will which be the next topic that we will look at. So, in boiling in addition to so heat transport from let us say solid to liquid we will also have latent heat so it is not just the sensible heat so it is not that just the sensible heat that controls the heat transport process it also the latent heat of the fluid controls the net amount of heat that is transported. So, what we are going to see is how to incorporate how to incorporate latent heat in the heat transport calculation and we retain our original objective the objective is to find the heat transport coefficient ok h and h bar. So, those are the objectives. Now, suppose if we have a fluid ok and this is something that all of us have encountered sometime like boiling water we have always done that right. So, if you take a beaker take any container ok. So, I am going to supply heat, I am going to heat the bottom of the container okay. and I have fluid which is sitting here ok. So, the question we want to ask is what is the net amount of heat that is transported from the solid to the fluid. Now, it is not just enough to say solid to fluid we have to qualify it with something else and the reason is that the fluid is now boiling and there is change in the phase of the fluid. So, the fluid is now going from, so this is the vapor state of the fluid and this is the liquid state of the fluid. So, therefore, the net amount of heat that is transported it depends upon what fraction of this fluid is going to be in the vapor state. So, therefore, we will have to now incorporate the extent of vapor which is formed inside this beaker in our heat transport calculation. So, it is not enough to simply know what is the amount of latent heat, but it is also important to know what fraction of the fluid is converted to the vapor state because there is latent heat which is involved here and so whatever heat that is supplied from the surface of this container the bottom surface of this container let us say that I know I can maintain this let us say at some surface temperature Ts ok. So, I keep giving supplying heat and whatever energy that is supplied to the surface is now taken up by the fluid and the fluid sensible heat is going to increase and moment it reaches the boiling point or the saturation temperature at the given conditions some fraction of this fluid is going to get converted into vapor phase. Now, if I continue to further heat there will be more fluid which is going to become vapor and that is what we have observed when we actually heat water in our kitchen right. All of you must have seen this either you have done it yourself or at least you have observed this where when you heat something you will always see that at different time points 
although you can still maintain at a same temperature and you can maintain constant you can main you can provide heat at a certain flux you will see that at the amount of vapor which is being formed is actually varying right as you supply heat to this container. So, what we are going to see in today's lecture is we are going to see how we can attempt to find heat transport coefficient based on what are the different different types of boiling. Okay. So, there are the based on the fraction of the fluid which is converted into vapor phase you can classify the boiling process into four different types. So, we are going to first describe what are these different types of boiling stages and we are going to see how to capture the heat transport coefficient for each of these stages. So, in order to do that we need to first look at how to perform a controlled experiment ok. A controlled experiment was performed and the way the controlled experiment was performed is instead of heating from the bottom of the container. platinum wire was placed inside at a specific location which is slightly above the bottom surface and then you provide so electrically heat the platinum wire and so you will start seeing vapors which is formed ok. Now, because the vapor is lighter they are going to travel through this liquid and they will start moving towards the upward side and the liquid is going to displace it right. So, therefore, clearly one can see that there is a, a natural convection process which is involved clearly natural convection is involved here because the fluid particles which are actually going into vapor state is now going to be lighter and so they have to be displaced and so that sets up a, a natural convection motion ok. Now, the second thing is it is obviously going to be a function of the surface properties particularly the nucleation process we will see a little bit more details about these in a short while. So, the bubbles which are actually nucleated on the surface where the heat is being provided to the fluid. So, you will see that the nucleation is a strong function of the properties of the surface. So, if the if the surface is very rough then certain locations are preferred for nucleation over other locations in the same surface. So, the surface roughness and other properties they play a strong role in boiling process ok. So, before we go into the details one of the important things is that the it is almost impossible it is very difficult to, to formulate governing equations. Now, it is not impossible to do that the only reason is that you are not introduced to two phase flows remember that it is a, a two phase system. So, if you know how to characterize two phase system which is beyond the scope of this class we should be able to write governing equations, but let us assume for now that it is not very easy to do that given the background of this course. So, one way to look at is, but still we can get some intuitive ideas as to what is going to happen ok. So, the way to look at it is. So, suppose we want to perform or we want to find what are all the dimensionless quantities which are involved here ok. So, what are all the dimensionless groups involved in boiling process? What are all the dimensionless groups? dimension less groups that are involved in the boiling process because all the convection topics that we have seen we always found that there is a relationship between the Nusselt number and the dimensionless quantities which is actually characterizing the 
transport process whether it is heat transport or mass transport or momentum transport right. So, therefore, if we know the dimensionless group then we can get some clue as to how to find the heat transport coefficient ok. So, what is so what we are going to use is we are going to use the dimensional analysis we are going to use the Buckingham Pi theorem which has been taught to you in your fluid mechanics class. So, the heat transport coefficient will be a function of what are the different properties or aspects of this problem which is going to decide the heat transport coefficient. Yeah. What are the different quantities or properties of the fluid which is going to influence the heat transport coefficient? So, remember that all the dimensionless numbers we got they are combination of sub properties of the fluid right. So, the objective is to find out what are these dimensionless groups. So, you need to know what are the properties of the fluid on which the heat transport coefficient is dependent upon depends upon right that is what that is the objective right. So, remember that you always found for a general system you always found result number is some function of Re and Prandtl number right. So, this is what we found for all the systems we have looked at so far and Reynolds number capture uses the properties of the fluid and captures the momentum boundary layer behavior and Prandtl number captures the thermal boundary layer behavior based on the properties of the fluid. So, similarly, so from here you can clearly see that heat transport coefficient is a function of some combination of the properties. So, if we can identify what the properties are on which the heat transport coefficient is going to depend upon we could actually do a, a dimensional analysis and find out what is the dimensionless group by using the Buckingham pi theorem. So, what are the properties density ok. So, that is yeah C p density the capacity which tells you what is the sensible heat that the fluid is going to take conductivity k f ok yeah latent heat. So, h f g is the latent heat of vaporization of the fluid ok. So, we have got 4 viscosity right because of natural convection then Yeah, temperature. What temperature? Is it surface temperature? So, remember that we are looking at the amount of heat that is transported. So, that depends upon no, depends upon the temperature difference, which is the difference between the surface and the saturation temperature, that is the boiling point of the fluid, ok. And then what else? Yeah. Yeah, but particularly when we are looking at boiling, assume that the fluid is actually at the saturation. So that is ok. Yeah. yeah. What else? So, natural convection. So, we said viscosity, but what else? Gravity, right? somehow the buoyancy has to play a role here right. So, it will be G times rho liquid minus rho vapor. So, that tells you what is the force body force difference between different locations in the fluid and that exhibits the buoyancy right. So, how many are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 what else that is it. Obviously, it depends upon the length of the wire right. So, you need to know what is the length of the wire ok. Anything else? Yeah. Because the amount of the area that is available depends upon the length. So, the length scale tells you what is the area that is available for heat transport. So, it has to be a function of the length. Remember Nusselt number you have h into L by k or d by k if it is the if it is a uh, polar coordinate system ok. What else? 
we have got viscosity, we have got sensible heat, we have got rho is another important aspect. So, ok, I will give you a hint. Okay, suppose if the vapor is now forming at the surface of the wire, ok, that is already taken into account because by and C tells you the difference in the density. So, that is good enough. Now, suppose you have a, a vapor bubble which is formed at the surface of the wire. Now, the extent of heat that is carried by the vapor depends upon what factor? Cp of the vapor, but something more than that. You need to have a contact, right? So, you are looking at heat transport from the wire to the fluid, ok. So, it is a strong function of the surface tension. So, if the surface tension plays a very strong role in actually defining what should be the extent of contact of this fluid with the with the wire. So, you have 10 different factors which actually play a role in defining what is the heat transport coefficient ok. Alright, so I would not go into the details of Buckingham pi because that has been covered in your uh, fluid mechanics class. So, if you use the Buckingham pi theorem. So, use the Buckingham pi theorem. So, you will get 5 dimensionless group. So, that will be Nusselt number equal to H L by F and that will be a function of G rho L rho V L cube by mu square comma C P delta T by and mu C p by k which is frontal number L square by sigma ok. What is C p delta d by H f g? H f g is the latent heat. So, that tells you. So, this is called the Jacob number that is the ratio of maximum sensible heat divided by latent heat ok. So, the ratio of the sensible heat that is carried divided by the corresponding latent heat. So, that this tells you what is the fraction of the heat that is supplied to the fluid particle which is carried as sensible heat and what fraction is actually used for phase change. So, whatever heat that you supply to the fluid is what is being used for transport of heat via sensible heat and also for change in the phase ok. So, the last one is called the bond number. So, that B O this is Prandtl number you know that the bond number is the ratio of bio and C forces to surface tension forces ok. So, that is the bond number and so these are the 5 dimensionless groups that will come out of the Buckingham pi theorem. I think all of you should actually try to get these 5 groups. If you go back to your fluid mechanics notes where you have been taught what how to derive these dimensionless groups and find out what these 5 dimensionless groups are from starting from the fact that the heat transport coefficient depends upon these 9 factors here. So, there are 2 classes of boiling ok. One is called the cool boiling and the other one is called the forced convection boiling ok. So, it might be a bit surprising to see forced convection here. So, we will see that Although the fluid is not being pumped or it is not being forcefully made to flow or something, but you will see that there is a certain type of forced convection which is involved and we will actually discuss it very briefly when we go to that topic. Okay. So, in pool boiling there are two types, one is called the free convection mode, the other one is called the nucleate boiling, nucleate pool boiling. 
ok. So, what was observed this experiment was done by person named Nukiyama. So, what he observed is that because it is a very controlled experiment ok, it is a very controlled experiment you can find out what is the net flux of heat that was actually or net flux of energy that was transported to the fluid. So, you made a plot between q s and delta t ok. Now, here we assume that when you start the experiment the fluid is almost at the saturation temperature ok. So, this is T s minus T sat. So, note that saturation temperature is fixed for a given fluid I under given conditions the saturation temperature or the boiling temperature is fixed. So, what he observed was something like this ok. So, we are going to explain in a short while we are going to explain what the why you get such a curve and what is the significance of this. So, suppose I so, so this is the kind of curve that he obtained and what was observed is that there is a, a maximal heat flux ok on the curve and there is a, a minimal heat flux in that curve ok. So, this is what is called as a, a boiling curve. what is called as a, a boiling curve and the location up to which the maxima arises maxima appears this region before that is called the pool boiling region called the pool boiling region and this region is called the transition region called the transition region and this place is called the film boiling region. So, these are the three different stages of boiling. 